All right, what's up guys, Nito here, and uh, today I want to talk about Whispering Ice. So I've been kind of doing some experiments around this item for a while now. Um, if you don't know, uh, Whispering Ice is this staff right here. It grants the Ice Storm skill, uh, which is basically like Firestorm, except that it scales heavily off of Intelligence, and it deals cold damage instead of fire, obviously. Um, also, unlike the new Firestorm, it doesn't have a big initial impact. Uh, it has just a bunch of smaller hits. And um, it got changed the same time as Firestorm did last league. And a lot of people thought it was basically a really big nerf uh, and that it was kind of an unplayable skill now, but that's not really the case. It's actually pretty, it's pretty decent. Um, it's definitely nerfed in some ways, but it is buffed in other ways. So. Um, what they actually changed was previously it had no limit on the number of storms you could summon. Now there's a limit of five. Um, so right away that seems like a really big nerf because, uh, you know, you can't really scale duration anymore as a, as a big damage multiplier because you can only stack up your, your storms five times. Um, so, so that definitely hurt it. And they also lowered the base duration and they lowered the number of impacts per second from 10 to five. So all that sounds like really bad, but uh, they did raise the damage uh, scaling. So the damage you gain per intel uh, per ten points of intelligence was raised, as well as the damage of, uh, effectiveness was also raised. And the most important change that I think a lot of people are overlooking is they changed the area of effect. Um, they actually made it smaller for the landing area, and then they made it bigger for the actual impact um of individual ice icicles so uh just to show you what it looks like if i cast a storm there's going to be this larger landing area where these uh icicles can land in and then each one of them has a smaller impact radius um, and what they did was they changed it from the landing area was 25 and now is 22 base radius and the impact what uh of each individual one went from 10 to 16. So basically, previously you had this issue where you kind of wanted less area of effect because the ratio of a single impact to the entire area was about was 40%, right? So 10 to 25. Whereas now the ratio is like 72%, uh, 16 to 22. So what that means is that it's much, much, much more likely for you to get overlapping hits on a single target within this area. Um, because basically the smaller hitbox enemies used to be really, really difficult to hit with a bunch of overlapping hits with the old Ice Storm. That is much, much easier to do now because you get um, much more of your overall area is covered by an individual hit. So it seems like on paper the numbers got nerfed a lot, but in practice it's actually better than you might think. Um, I did actually even league start a Whispering Ice Archmage build on a Hierophant last league, uh, and it was actually a pretty decent league start. So I have played this guild quite a bit uh, in its newer form, and um, this league I actually wanted to experiment around using um, Dewedry's skin. Uh, on an occultist. So what this does is it basically allows you to summon these effigies, which look like this, and you put in a bunch of curses and enemies near these effigies, which are kind of like totems, but they don't they don't have life, they don't die or anything. Um, and you can have three of them at once, and they are instant cast. So you can actually put this on your left click and then just hold it down, and as you run around, you'll just summon a bunch of effigies. And also worth noting that um, the curses on your effigies don't count towards your curse limit. So uh, I'm combining it with this replica Doedri's Damning, which uh, you know, removes one of our curses. So we can apply one fewer curse. So currently have no extra curses. So that means we can't apply any curses normally, but uh, the, this, this bypasses it. So we're actually applying six curses so we have Punishment, Frostbite, Temp Chains, Ellie, Ellie Weakness, and Feeble, and Despair, um, all from uh, just using these effigies, right? 
So that's really powerful in and of itself. Um, and the nice thing is that uh, Whispering Ice, you know, we don't need a six link body armor because we're using Whispering Ice and it's just, just uses the staff and the staff doesn't even need to be six linked either. So it's very easy to get this build uh, up and running. And then I'm also using Dewedri Scorn, which uh, has 20% increased damage with hits and ailments per curse on enemy. Uh, again, we have six of those, so that's uh, 120%. And then there's another 20% increased elemental damage. So that's 140% uh, increased damage from this helmet, which is very strong. Plus, it has some intelligence on it, uh, as does Dewedri's skin. And of course, Whispering Ice just needs as much intelligence as possible to scale it. Um, so, if you've played Whispering Ice, a lot of the trees are starting to look kind of kind of the same for a lot of Whispering Ice builds. Uh, you basically want as long a path as possible all the way around the tree. Um, and then at the very end, you want a jewel called Split Personality, which personal, per, personal, uh, currently I don't have um, because they are quite expensive. But you can get a jewel that basically says um, increased effect for the number of node, the, the number of travel nodes between your starting location and the jewel socket that you socket it in. And you can get a flat intelligence and flat energy shield on that jewel. Uh, and it scales up as you go really far. So that's kind of the idea here. And then there's a lot of these conversion, um, fertile mind or uh, brute force solution converting strength or dex into intelligence along, along this path. Um, so that's kind of what my tree looks like currently. And uh, another thing you can have is a uh, pure talent gives 25 to all attributes if you're connected to the scion, which I am right here. Uh, as well as some other uh, good stats if you connect to uh, some of the other starting locations. So that's quite good. Um, and then I'm also using this Unnatural Instinct, which is kind of a neat spot right here because it gives us 45% uh, increased area of effect. And um, that's actually one thing I didn't quite talk about is that you no longer need conch effect to make whispering ice good. It's actually good to scale area of effect now, uh, in my opinion. Um, there, you know, there might be some situations where you you do want to land all of your your hits on a small stationary target, and that's when conch effect is really valuable. But against any target that's um, that's moving, um, it's much nicer just have big area of effect. And again, because the area of each individual impact of Ice Storm is better now, um, you're more likely to get overlapping impacts. So uh, AOE scaling is actually pretty good on Whispering Ice now. Uh, this is also giving us cast speed and curse effect um, and duration and all of those are, and, and some life regen. All that stuff is really nice for Whispering Ice. So I liked this uh, unnatural instinct, instinct spot. Um, quite a bit for this for this particular build but anyways um, the other thing I'll mention is that a lot of people are playing cast while channeling cyclone for uh, for ice storm these days and it's pretty good it, it feels pretty nice to play it's pretty smooth um, I also quite like the unleash play style um, so instead of doing cast while channeling you can use unleash and then you can use the new void sphere um, to basically unleash all five of your storms at the same time in one spot and then you void sphere right below it and it pulls the entire screen directly underneath your five storms and everything just dies pretty pretty immediately. Um, so that's another way you can play. But So for this character I wanted to try out this cyclone version and I'm utilizing the stampede boots because they actually override the cyclone's uh, slowing effect by setting your movement speed to 150% of its base value. Um, normally Cyclone has, what is it? There's a 30% less movement speed modifier on there. So this, uh, these boots can override that. And they also give you cooldown recovery rate of travel skills, um, such as Frost Blink. So you can actually just Frost Blink, which is instant, um, while you're cycloning around. And then you also have your instant uh, Doedri's Damning Summonings um, the effigies. So it's all pretty instant. You can just never stop cycloning basically. Um, so I'll just show you what this map looks like. Um, because I'm an occultist, everything kind of just pops 
Uh, it feels pretty nice to clear with, honestly. Um, this character is only level 82, and I am nowhere near resist capped. Um, and I kind of just ignored that because I've just been leveling so quickly because <laughs> you just kind of shoot through the, the levels and pop everything immediately. So um, feels quite good, especially because I'm using the Punishment Curse in addition to Occultist's Profane Bloom. And Punishment also has its own like uh, Corpse Explosion effect. Or not Corpse Explosion, but uh, On Death Explosion effect. Uh, and it just makes it really simple to pop entire packs at once. Uh, it's pretty nice. Um, so yeah, it, Whispering Ice is actually not in as bad of a place as most people seem to think it is. Um, however, it's not that exciting anymore, I guess. It seems like Whispering Ice is kind of a solved problem. You know, a lot of the builds these days Basically, you only need one stat, and that's that's intelligence, right? You just do whatever you can to get more intelligence. Um, I will say that this league has been dropping a lot of uh, interesting synthesized bases, and one of the implicits you can get on like jewelry and stuff is uh, percent increased intelligence. So it's actually quite easy to craft high intelligence um, jewelry uh, and belts, and you can get it on rings and stuff too. Um, so that's all very strong. But yeah, so I wanted to really just mess around with this Dewey skin to see if it was worth using on this type of build. Um, I think for clearing, it's certainly quite good. Also for, for general like defenses, it's, it's pretty good because you're running Temp Chains and um, Enfeeble with increased curse effect from the ring. Um, and that's all really strong defensively. However, when it comes to bossing, um, I think you're probably better off just going for like a, you know, a high ES um, base that has percent intelligence on it, uh, something like that, and just getting, you know, literally just as much intelligence as possible. Um, you know, Whispering Ice is a big brain build, so uh, it's just about stacking that intelligence. And I, I, I was checking out PoE Ninja and looking at some some of the other builds that other people are. Uh, doing with Whispering Ice, and it seems like you can get up to like 3,000 intelligence. This character is only at 1750 so far, but I'm also only level 82, so, you know, if I keep playing this character, which uh, probably probably won't, honestly, just because I felt like I kind of explored the interaction enough, um, but if I were to keep playing this character, you know, you could definitely get it over 2,000 easily. Um, maybe 2500 uh, although without without a percent intelligence chest that would be it'd be hard to get more than that um, but yeah it's totally an end game viable build you can do uh, you can do all content with whispering ice and it's still quite a fun skill to play um, so yeah i just wanted to clear up some of the misconceptions about the new whispering ice and people thinking how terrible it is and uh it's really not that bad um Show you what it looks like here. See, uh, against against a smaller target like this, it's actually a lot worse um, because the hitbox is much smaller, and so uh, you know they're more likely to avoid the um, the individual hits, right? So um, it's it's kind of an inconsistent skill because larger hitboxes. On you know on a, a boss with larger hitboxes is going to take like ten times the damage, um, and then you have like these smaller kind of humanoid bosses uh, that have much smaller hit point uh, hitboxes and uh, they just take less damage. Um, so, but that said, like you can still do all the content with Whispering Nice, uh, and it's still pretty fun, especially with this setup where you can kind of just like zoom around and pop the whole screen. And this is definitely the best clearing setup I've played for Whispering Ice. Um, so yeah, check it out. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.